So this is a demo that we have created in which we are kind of going to be talking about three scenarios. Uh, it covers Oracle EBS order management scenarios, EBS and CRM integration and we also cover a negative testing scenario. Now this demo has been purposefully slowed down for viewing purposes because typically automation runs just as fast as the system in question. So we have slowed down the automation just for viewing and I am going to be kind of pausing this demo at certain times so that I can speak about what is happening in the screen and kind of help you understand and walk through these processes. So the screen that you see in front of you is a test link system. It's basically a, a, an open source test management tool that is integrated with Xenon. We have used this as an example in this case. You are uh, Typically you can use any test management system including Excel. So here is a typical test case repository that we build. So as I mentioned in the previous slides about 111 odd test cases that are already automated or out of a 500 test case base that we have. All the test cases are documented uh, stepwise in, our, uh, in, in the system. And, and when it comes to when it comes to updating the results back, Xenon automatically updates the result back into the repository. So you have full traceability of your testing. So I'm going to be covering three test cases in this. One is around an order, order creation with multiple test data sets. The second is about a CRM to EBS integration flow. And we have used SFDC uh, as a CRM here. And the third is an order management functional failure scenario. So what happens when something fails? So this is uh, this is this is the data driven template that we have in which we have we can host a whole set of data against multiple uh, EBS modules as you can say this is the order management module we have similarly we have a fixed asset general ledger account receivables site procurement etc so most of the modules are simply excel template driven which means you can host your test data there and your test data is simply picked up from from your excel which means you just store it once run it multiple times that kind of saves a lot of effort because typically Oracle forms are very data heavy, there are a lot of fields to be input. So this significantly helps in accelerating your testing cycles. This is the UI using which we call it the test build manager. This is the UI that is available for you as a user. And it's a simple UI that helps you choose your test cases and execute them. This is the dashboard view. You can here see all the automation test cases that you have run over the past, uh, the failure scenarios, the past scenarios and detailed drill downs across all of this which I will be kind of talking of. In the next stages, you can create multiple users across your organizations who can use this and, and there are collaborative ways of adding comments, notifications and things like that that helps in terms of ensuring testing collaboration even with the developers. So you can see the bugs that are being raised, you can add the number of users that you want in the organization who are able to be using this tool. So it becomes a very collaborative way of uh, engaging your testers and kind of having a single unified repository for testing. You can add your test cases, you can add different modules, you can design your build as however you want it. It's, it's completely configurable. So in this case we are going to be creating a new build and that new build would be a subset of our existing test cases. So you typically enter the build name. So you might have a release name or a testing cycle name that you want to be entering here and you can be choosing any of the test cases that you want to be testing as part of it. So all this can be intuitively done with no training required whatsoever. So basically uh, you don't need to be an automation engineer to be operating this UI. You can just, it's completely intuitive, you just come in, select the test cases and execute it. And this can be done both by UAT users or business analysts. So as you see the shopping cart on the left goes on increasing as you select the number of test cases. And finally you select the automation VM or the server that you're going to be executing it on and the browser on which you're going to be executing it on. And at a click of a button, you can trigger the automation. So it automatically from here, everything that you see is automatically happening. It's triggering the browser. It is reading your test cases. It is automatically executing those test cases against the source system. So in this case, it's triggering the Oracle EBS uh, system first. And it's going to be entering uh, the order management screen. And, and, and as I showed you in the previous Excel, there are a couple of data sets that we have kept there for order management. It's going to be running against multiple data sets. So for the purpose of demo, as I said, I have slowed this down so that we can actually see what's happening. Usually in a typical automation run, this, these things will go in a, uh, a jiffy. It will it'll really go very fast. So as you can see, Xenon can operate with complex Oracle forms. We have considered all types of Oracle objects that are typically there in an Oracle 
uh, EBS system and that all of that has been created as pre-built libraries in our framework. So the first set of test data from the Excel is already run, now it's running the second set of test data. Now imagine this in a scenario when, when, when you have uh, a multiple test data sets, both positive and negative test data sets and, and you want to be running the same uh, different test data sets against your source application and covering a lot of base. This kind of ensures that your testing is comprehensive. You don't have to cut corners simply because you're doing manual testing. In automation, that is the advantage. The advantage is it will consistently do how it is programmed to be run and it will run across all of the test cases. So from here, we, it moves on to the scenario two, which is basically the SFDC to EBS integration. So we've just taken a, a simple integration scenario because typically in an enterprise, uh, there's hardly ever we notice that a system is working uh, 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 as a standalone. There is usually integration in place, uh, whether it's on-premise, on the cloud, uh, we have connectors that work with it. It, all, it can also do database validations, uh, especially if there are any database integrations involved. So here we are going to be doing a simple account creation to, to, a, to, a, to a code creation process and the code creation then leads on to an order generation process on the EBS side. So I won't be talking through all of the individual steps within this, but the idea is it can automate your business process. So right from uh, 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 an account creation to an opportunity creation process uh, to, to, to a quoting process to an ordering process. The entire business process can be automated. And all this is available to the, to the, to the, to the business analyst or a UAT user who can simply select this from the, from the UI of the test build manager and execute these test cases. He can play around with the configuration, it can play around with the data files, ensure that he can run it across multiple data sets. So in this case, the code is generated in SFDC and now it will move on to trigger the Oracle EBS system wherein the same code is passed on to create the order. It can do this concurrently, it can do this uh, serially, it, it all depends on how you program it. So here you see the order management form again. And, and the same data set is uh, for, the, for the account that was created in CRM is now being created on the ERP side. It can deal with multiple different Oracle fields and forms and uh, it, it can read any type of uh, Oracle screens. So complex Oracle applets which are traditionally not readable from Selenium, we are able to read that using the Xenon framework. So the order has been booked here. So basically, this is just a very simplistic example of the different kind of business process that you can automate using Xenon. So the third scenario is actually a functional failure scenario. So we have purposefully failed a test case to show what happens when something fails. So in this case, we have kind of triggered the same Oracle form and we kind of created a failure scenario. So something was meant to be running and it hasn't run. So the test case is a failure in this case. So what happens next? So Xenon after the execution of the test cases goes back into the testing system and it has automatically updated all your test results. So the ones that you see in the green on the left side are all the past cases. So Xenon automatically does test documentation for you. The ones that have failed are being marked as failed in the system, in the test case documentation and there is automatically a defect that is raised. All of the details around why it has failed is already raised in the defect tracking system. So in this case we have used Jira as a defect tracking system. You can hook Xenon to any other defect tracking system that you would already have. So as you can see, here is a bug that Xenon has raised automatically for the failure scenario and it has listed the steps that is needed to reproduce that bug. It has also put in the screenshots in the process so that when a developer comes in and, and gets notifications about the bugs, he can simply look at the screenshots and the steps and understand at which point has it really failed. So this really helps in, 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 in improving your defect fixing cycle. Apart from that, your execution results are automatically mailed. So, so imagine if you're running a thousand test cases out of which about a 900 test case pass, a hundred test case fail, there are hundreds of defects raised, all of this being done automatically. And, and the build summary comes in. So basically you can compare your last four builds, it's configurable for you to see how your builds are 
how your build maturity is happening, how your testing efficiency is increasing. So in this case, it has, it has, there's one failure test scenario and there were two positive scenarios. All those detailed results are already part of your dashboard. There is no manual activity needed to update back your dashboard. All of this is automatically documented for you. So in this case it was a scenario one. If you want to be drilling down to each and every scenario, you could do that. This is especially useful for a business user or even for a developer who wants to see where the problem was or a business user who wants to validate the testing. It really helps if you see that all of these test cases are kind of documented very linearly, step by step, drill down to the last level along with screenshots, which kind of ensure that the testing is done. Because usually what happens is testing is an area where you cut corners and that results in uh, production problems eventually. Whereas with automation, all of that can be avoided. So in this case, there are screenshots attached to your dashboard. The, the, the defect ID is pushed back directly into the dashboard. So there is complete traceability. So right from your test cases, to your execution, to your defects, to your screenshots, to your steps, everything is traceable. It's all cross-linked so that it's easier to find. 